Well, welcome everyone to today's webinar, Navigating a New World, the top 11 reset skills for administrative assistants. Yes, come on in, say hello. Tell us where uh, you are chiming in from. I love to see the chat and see all these wonderful assistants coming in from all over the world. My name is Joan Burge and I'm the founder and CEO of Office Dynamics International. We are a global leader in the development and presentation of sophisticated training programs and information for administrative professionals. And we have been doing this for 30 years, 31 years, actually. <laughs> Time goes pretty fast. Well, I'm glad you're here for today's webinar because this is a very, very timely topic. But let's go through a few logistics first. The learning portion of this webinar will be about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, and then we will have Q&A. Uh, I'm eager to see the questions that you're going to submit today based on our topic. If you have any technical issues, please be sure to just put that in the chat. That is the best way for us to assist you. By the way, you can post your questions anytime throughout the webinar. And there's a little icon that you can select indicating you have a question. And this way, Malia can pull those quickly and have those ready to go at the end. You will receive a replay link. And if you happen to experience any lag, I know the last two webinars, some uh, viewers were telling us that they were experiencing lag. It really is not due to our part because our tech person has thoroughly checked that out. But if you are at home, make sure no one else is streaming in your house. And also if you hardwire, that really helps. So let's begin. You know, as we transition through a different phase of our workplace and returning to offices, as many people are gonna be doing after Labor Day, we need new coping mechanisms. And, you know, to be honest, the last few weeks have been a little bit uh, disruptive, right? We were all on this roll. Your organizations had plans on how they were going to move forward after Labor Day and bringing people back into the office and so forth. And once again, we've had a little upheaval, but we're kind of used to that right now, aren't we? So, I am going to walk you through the 11 reset skills. Now I created those reset skills last summer when we were going through the pandemic, you know, when it had first started and we really had to do a lot of shifting and resetting ourselves and resetting our skills. Well, I've been talking about those reset skills for a year and a half. They have not gone away. But today, what I'm going to share with you, in addition to those 11 skills, where are we on the spectrum? Do we need to amplify those set of skills or have some of them leveled off? And then I actually have added three new reset skills. And I do have a slide to share with you today to help you, you know, visibly see where we are with all of that. What I'd like to do first, though, is I'd like to do a poll because I am very curious over the next month, what is your workplace situation going to be like? Are, is everyone still going to be working from home? Um, are you going to go to the hybrid model or is everyone being called back to your office? So I'd love to see where everyone is. I'm going to launch the poll and if you would please. Tell me if you think about between now and the next month, because maybe some of you aren't going to go back until after Labor Day, where you are. You could see a lot of hybrid model, right? I'll give it a little more time. So if you haven't voted yet, please do. And hybrid is in the forefront of this race. <laughs> All 
right. Well, I'm going to stop the poll there because I think we have a really good idea of where we are. So uh, if we look at still a good percentage working from home, um, the hybrid model definitely is in the forefront. And then many employees I know are being called back into the offices. In fact, this week we're working with a client and I am doing webinars this week um, for an organization that everyone now has been brought back into the office. So thank you so much for participating in that. So let's go on and start with the reset skills. And like I said, for this, I'm going to share slides with you. I thought it would just be easier for you to follow along and to be able to take notes. So let's dig in. So here are the 11 that I created last year. And then I'm also providing you where we are or where as of July 30th of this year. So let's go through each of these and let's start with their in alphabetical order, by the way, assessing your strengths and your gaps. So last year, you really had to assess your strengths and your gaps as everything shifted very quickly and you, you really learned probably what were your strengths. I mean, in times of chaos and having to adjust and go from a, an office work environment to completely working at home. And I'm sure you found out your gaps. Where were you really struggling a year ago? And maybe technology was a big area for some of you. Maybe it was for me too, because all of our training pre-COVID was on-site training. So we had to quickly pivot and move everything to the virtual world, which we did successfully, but that was a gap. That was a learning curve. So today, where are we today? It has leveled off, but it's it should be ongoing. So what do I mean by that? Well, you should always assess your state strengths and your gaps. You know, if you're a star performing assistant, if you want to be that rock star assistant or whatever we call it, that world class assistant, you should be doing this on a regular basis. So I'm not saying stop assessing, but you've probably leveled off a bit and you probably now know where your strengths are. Um, since a year ago, you probably got through your gap areas. Hopefully you were taking training over the past 18 months that helped you with those areas. But again, it should be ongoing. So maybe monthly you assess where you are. You look at, all right, this past month, where did I excel? Where did I shine? What was, what was comfortable for me? What do I move through easily? Because that's usually an indicator of our strengths. And then what did I struggle with? Uh, I know for me, I even made a note this morning on my way into the office. I, I grabbed a quick little piece of paper and I want to learn more about Infusionsoft, which is a platform we use. I want to learn more about different apps that might be great for assistance. Um, so I've got my little list, you know, that I've started. Build community. That is strong. That is as strong as ever. Now, what do I mean by that? So last year, as employees fled out of their offices and how to work from home, they really felt siloed. They felt isolated, right? Um, they felt alone. They didn't have the the feelings that you get when you go into your offices, when you, you have that sense of community. And so what was emerging is assistance having the strong need for community, but not only assistance. All employees were feeling this and feeling pretty alone. It is still strong today. As I talk to, uh, you know, assistants from all over the world, and as I talk to executives and HR managers, these are things that, you know, they want to focus on with their employees. It's about building community. So my question to you, you know, to think about, and you can put your ideas in the chat, you know, if you want to, but um, what are you doing to help build community? 
because I feel as administrative professionals, you're in a good position to do create some things to build that community. If, if some of you are working from home part-time, if some of you are working from home all the time, uh, we have both situations. What can you do? Can you host something, you know, host some little gathering or get together via Zoom and make it fun and make it interesting and bring together the camaraderie, you know, is what's important. And excuse me, I just I want to jump over to see the chat here. So um, it's it's for us to think about how do we build community? Don't wait for everyone else to initiate it. If you are longing for those feelings of community and so forth, then look at what you can do. And I, again, imagine many of you have been doing these types of things. I actually had a class yesterday with 50 assistants. They all work for the same organization. And so uh, one of them was saying every week their assistants have a virtual meeting in their, their particular department. They all gather every week for a little amount of time, maybe a half hour. And, and they just share their challenges. They share their best practices, but they feel close to each other. And so in the midst of all this chaos, it's important we have others with us. Um, and other relationships. All right, clarify expectations. Last year, when everything changed, we, we had to get clear on what were the expectations, but a lot of us didn't even know. We had never been through a pandemic, right? <laughs> so a lot of us were kind of wavering, and then I think got to a point where we were starting to clarify expectations of each other. Well, I've got, as of now, there is a strong need for clarifying expectations. If your workplace situation is changing from full-time working from home to hybrid, because what you've been used to with fully working from home is now going to shift. It's now going to change. There are more unknowns. We don't know exactly what it feels like. You know, we're hearing things like, well, some people will be in two days a week. Other people might be in three days a week. Some of your managers will be working from home. Some won't be working from home. I mean, it's going to be kind of all over the place. Um, and maybe again, until your organization gets a rhythm down. So definitely, if I were you, I would continue to clarify expectations with the people I support to make sure, is this still how you want something done? Uh, is this still the process that we want to use? What do we need to change? Am I delivering what you need, you know, Mr. Manager, Ms. Manager? Um, because the, the expectations can be shifting all the time now. You know, what we thought we wanted yesterday, now it's going to change because there's been another change in our environment or in the workplace. So I hope that makes sense to you. And this takes good communication skills. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Or what's also great is to say, well, um, here's what I think you're telling me you need from me. And then state what you think. Then it gives that person a chance to say, oh, no, no, that's not what I meant. This is what I really need from you. Collaboration. Um, it's always necessary. I was teaching collaboration skills to assistants starting in 2013. Collaboration is different than teamwork. And I'll give you the, the big picture concepts. In teamwork, we have a playbook. We have a leader. We have a coach. Somebody who's kind of leading the group, telling you what to do. And you have these step-by-step -step plans. And you make sure they happen. And there's assigned roles. OK, collaboration isn't like that. In fact, last year you were collaborating without knowing it. In collaboration, there is no rule book. OK, you're creating it. The process is evolving as you're going through it. Anyone could be a leader in collaboration. Um, it's not an assigned role. You use the strengths and talents of each person. And, and you identify those. And so it, the answers emerge as you're working through it together. 
and think back, isn't that what you were doing last year, right? I know we were for sure, and we're still doing it. So collaboration will always be necessary in our workplace. Maintain being fluid. And if you're the individual that needs an instruction book and you want to be given the play by play, you know, I'm sorry, it's just not that way today. And as we continue to emerge even months from now, if you can maintain being fluid and keeping a good attitude and going with the flow, it will really help you. Creativity. I love this one. Again, this is always necessary. Another uh, topic I've been teaching assistants for years about creativity. And in, in a moment, I'm going to show you something to kind of help you understand this a little bit. Um, again, last year, you had to use a lot of creativity, but it's always necessary. Now, I'm not talking about that you have to be an artistic or creative person. That's not what I mean, but let me demonstrate something for you. So this is an activity we do in a class. This is a cush ball. Can you all see the cush ball? Okay. Now I want you to think about what could this be? If we made it really big or we made it really small or we put a clip on it, it could be an earring for me. If I put a pin on it, I could have a brooch. It could be a scrubber for my dishes. It could be a de-stressor. So go ahead, throw some ideas in the chat. What could this be? Use your imagination. Think about the possibilities of what this could be. If we make it really big, we could maybe sit on it and bounce, right? It could be a child's toy, a pen topper. Thank you. Yes. It could be, I don't know, a pier. It could be a face scrubber, a keychain. Very good. Cat toy, necklace. Great. Hair decoration, a duster. Keep them coming. Yes, yes, yes. A pom-pom. Love that. A fidget toy. <laughs> That's very good. You're doing great. So look at this, look at these ideas, a Christmas ornament, a ribbon on a gift, love that one. So the idea is apply that to your work. Don't see your, your work or something as it is. If we only see something as it is, if we use what I call a period, so instead of asking questions, you use a period, a period means stop, this is it. There is no better. But if we learn to put a question mark in our mind, our subconscious will find new ideas for us. It, your subconscious doesn't look if you have a period in your mind. So the idea is as you go through your data, ask yourself, well, what if I tried this? Well, what if I tried that? Well, how can I streamline this process? How can I make this simpler? How can I do this faster? How could I have handled that situation better? Do you see if you put a question mark in your mind, your subconscious works to find the answers. I'll get answers early in the morning, when I'm in the shower, when I'm putting in my makeup, I'll get answers when I'm driving because I see something that triggers an answer for me when I'm in the supermarket. So after today, start to look at your, your work with a question mark. You could do things such as, how can I make my job more interesting? I sit at home every single day. I've been home for 18 months. I do the same old stuff every day. I have the same old routine. I'm getting bored. It's getting mundane. You know, so you ask yourself, how can I make this more interesting? How can I do this in a better way? And I promise you answers will come. They may not come right away, but eventually they're going to come because you planted the seed. Emotional intelligence. How many of you have heard about emotional intelligence? How many of you have been studying emotional intelligence? Another key skill for administrative professionals. You are in a perfect situation to apply this. So let's go through what are the, the different dimensions of emotional intelligence. And I refer to Daniel Goleman, G-O-L-E-M-A-N. He's kind of the godfather of emotional intelligence that came out in the early 90s, I believe, is when I first heard about it. And so, oh good, I'm glad a lot of you have heard it, that it's big in your workplace, it's so important. 
Yay, I'm very happy to hear this. So the, the first dimension is I know me. Well, we all know me, don't we? I know me. <laughs> I know what excites me. I know what frustrates me. I know what makes me happy, what makes me sad. I know how I'm going to respond to a situation. I know I get excited every time I look at the chat and I see all you fabulous assistants coming in from all over the world. I know me. The second dimension is I manage me. So we can know me, but not always manage me. And I fall guilty to it. I have to be honest. There's times I don't always manage me. Uh, you know, just a week ago, I had a, an upsetting business situation occur. And, you know, at first it was like, whoa, I've got to kind of let this out. <laughs> I knew how I was feeling. And you know, so there's times, you know, when do you let some of the steam off, as I call it, but then also get to a point where you're managing your emotions? And maybe last year with all the turmoil, your, your emotions were all over the place. Now I would like to hope that all of us could be more in a proactive managing ourselves as we move forward with our workplace. The third dimension is I know I try to know you and I love the third dimension. I mean, it's something I've used for 31 years of using in my business. You know, when I work with new clients, when I'm meeting a new assistant, I try to know you. And so the idea is, as you're working with different people, make the time to know other people, to understand them. How do they think? How do they respond? Because it helps you know how to better respond. It helps you know how to position your communications. So do you see by you getting to know others? Well, first of all, you show you care. And secondly, you'll actually do a better job and have better relationships. And then the fourth dimension is referred to as social awareness. And that's where we get to a point where we can facilitate difficult conversations. So maybe you're on a Zoom meeting or a virtual Teams meeting and you see two people kind of struggling with the conversation with each other that you can jump in and facilitate that conversation. You might say, well, Mike, here's what I'm hearing you're saying. This is what I think you're saying. And, and Jill, this is what I'm hearing from you you know, and, and bring in the conversation together. Also, the fourth dimension is about visionary leadership. It's about being a visionary. It's about leading. So you as assistants, how would you apply that? Well, you would look for what you think needs to be done, how things can be improved, what could be better, how about different processes? I mean, you have a lot of great ideas. And then you would lead that forward. The next high tolerance for change. I've talked about that since 1990, but seriously, right now we need this high tolerance on steroids, on steroids. Everything is so disrupted. Just when we think we're getting things pinned down, just when we think, ah, oh, life is back to normal. No, <laughs> right? So this is a critical, critical skill. I want to encourage you. It is a skill. I've been teaching, again, this topic for 31 years. Um, so if you learn to develop that skill, change is still hard, but you more easily adapt. You know how to deal with it. And one positive thing, you know, that I could tell you um, with change is, is to look again for the opportunity, look for the good, what could come of this, especially when it's a change we're not happy about. Try to really look for what's the lesson you can learn. Um, and, and you have to be tough skinned. I mean, you just do. Today, we all have to have a little tougher skin. We can't take things so personally with ourselves. So be tough skinned with yourself 
but have empathy for others. Because remember, there's a lot of people out there who are struggling, who are having a hard time. Leadership for assistance is always necessary. I've always said you can be leaders. It's a set of characteristics. You don't have to be in a management position to be a leader. There are many ways that you can lead as an assistant. You can lead in the relationship with the people you support. If you're not getting what you need from the people you support, maybe they're not checking in with you enough. They don't want to have any verbal conversations with you, and that makes it more difficult for you to do your job then lead, initiate, and let them know the effect that that's having and what you would like to see happen. You can lead a team of other assistants. Like I said, this class that I was with yesterday, the assistants, they one of them took the lead to get the group of assistants together every week. We can lead ourselves and, and just our own things as well, leading ourselves in our careers, leading ourselves in our wellness uh, which we're going to talk about in a little while. All right, the next one. This is what I would call an advanced skill. It's very important. So it says, stay informed and understand potential ramifications of what you're reading or seeing. What are the ramifications to you, to your organization, or to your leader? So this is critical. In other words, especially now during these times, you should be paying attention um, and don't go real deep because if you go real deep with the news and what's going on, you could get very depressed. You can get very depressed. But the idea is to pay attention. Like for example, um, I pay attention a lot to what's going on in the travel industry, in the meeting industry, what companies are doing, how are they feeling about people traveling and so forth, because that could affect us. We hold a conference every October. This year we have an in-person conference in Las Vegas. We're doing the end of October. So I, we pay attention and we see what's going on because that can have good or bad ramifications for us. If your executives are going to start to travel or they are starting to travel, go on USA Today, read the travel part. You can go to the airlines right away. There's a tab for the airlines. See what's going on. What are the airlines doing? So it's really important to stay informed and then think about what is the good that could happen or could there be danger in what's going on to where it does affect your industry or your leader or uh, the work that you're doing? So like I said, this is a very advanced skill, but it's definitely worth developing because it helps put you in a proactive mode. As an assistant, your antennas should go up and you should be aware so, like I said, you can be prepared. The next one, technology, of course, that was huge last year, right? We all hit it hard in learning new technologies. Um, and so right now I have it as leveled off because many of you have already done it. I mean, last year you had to jump in right away. You were learning Teams or you were learning Zoom or whatever you were doing. Maybe there were different apps you were using. Um, so the pressure is off us, you know, however, it's still important, right, to continue to fine tune how we use the technology. Like I said, it's on my list. Um, I want to find out what apps might be out there that truly help um, us be more effective. But I also don't jump at every new app. You know, to me, it isn't, well, try this, we'll try Slack, we'll try this, try this, try Asana. And, you know, you're all over the place. So also, I, how I view it <laughs> is we should do our homework and be a little selective. And, and then, of course, you have to test it, right, and see if it really works for you. Um, let's see, my company has changed technology quite a bit. Yeah, changing apps, changing tools. And I know we're all still trying to figure it out, right? We're still trying to figure out what works best. 
And then the last one, well-being. It's always been important, but it's it's very important. So again, in talking with leadership in organizations, HR managers um, and executives, and in reading my Human Resource Association daily newsletters, there is a lot of emphasis being placed on employee well-being. I can tell you uh, one company hired me because they were very concerned about their assistants' well-being. Their top assistants were working 50 hour week after week after week. Business was thriving and so forth. And they came to me to put together a program to talk to them about, you know, because they're working from home, there are no boundaries and, and all of it. So well-being is still very important. Uh, and if you're going to continue to work from home, you know, but even if you go to the hybrid model, um, really making sure that you, you don't get overworked, if you get burnt out, if you get too tired, what happens, it can weaken our immune system. And right now we can't afford to have our immune systems weakened. I mean, really never, but especially now we need to be very careful, make sure you get your rest and and so forth. So that's where we stand. And then I came up with what other reset skills do I think we need as of August 1st? So on August 1st, I was, I really looked at where are we right now, you know, and what's going on. And so these are part of that, our list, what we need to add to the mix, optimism, really important. Um, I'm sure if you're like me and many others um, with the past few weeks and what we're seeing in the news, it's easy to get discouraged, feeling like we were taking a step back, right? But we need to continue to maintain our optimism, look forward to, you know, again, good things and uh, getting better and moving forward and learning how to just keep going, which will lead into my other two reset skills. But to stay optimistic, to keep your good attitude is important. Resiliency has always been important. In fact, I started teaching resiliency to assistants, I believe it was 2016. In fact, our conference that year was entitled The Resilient Assistant. This is a number one skill, I believe, for everyone. We need to truly be resilient today. As assistants, I think you need an extra dose of resiliency because of all the people you're supporting. And you're not only dealing with your own stressors, but you have their stressors. Um, and also as an assistant, you have to be resilient to what gets thrown at you, right? And, and be resilient when maybe a manager doesn't deliver a message exactly how you want it. Sometimes they just don't have time. They're not thinking. They're just spewing out what they need. And maybe they've got a lot of pressure and stress and what's going on in their head. And they don't always deliver the message like you want it to be with a pretty bow on it. So it's important to just be resilient and focus on the context. We definitely need staying power. I picture a, um, a marathon runner. You know, I was fortunate to watch a marathon race here years ago. I had never really been in person, watched one, and my daughter was participating at the time. And I just couldn't believe the staying power of those runners, you know, that they started out with all this energy and enthusiasm and excitement and, yeah, we're going to go, go, go. And then four hours later, you see them dragging themselves in, but determined to get to the finish line. So... I, that's how um, I view us. Sorry, I'm going to turn the slides off now. Uh, okay, Malia, I guess I'm going to go full screen. There we go. So that's what I view. And I tell myself, you know, right now, I've got to have that staying power, got to stay in it, stay enthusiastic, keep pushing forward you know, every day to not give up, um, to keep looking for opportunities, what we could do better. And so 
I hope if you find yourself getting tired of this rat race called life, <laughs> just picture a marathon runner and how they muster up every bit of strength and energy to get to that finish line. And picture yourself being able to do that is very important. So I've actually delivered all my content in a very timely fashion. I'm proud of myself. I ran you through this in 35 minutes. So that means we just have more time to, to chat and have and take your questions, um, which I'm really eager to hear. So let's start. Let's go to Q&A. And then if you're all curious about this basket, I know you're probably all looking at that and wondering what it is. We are going to have to wait toward the end of the webinar. I'll tell you what that is about. Okay. It's a special announcement. Um, but Malia, let, let's start. Thank you. I, I hope you all really did enjoy the subject. And I just want to take a moment to though, really quick, you know, with all sincerity from my heart, uh, I just, I know from assistants all over the world and interacting with you on a regular basis, I, I know it's tough times and um, you've got your families and kids going back to school. You have a lot on your minds, a lot of things going on, um, but we're all going to get this. We're going to get through this together. We're all going to do this together. You're not alone. And I want you to know Office Dynamics is here for you. We're always here for you. And, and I hope that we, we have the tool that might help you um, with whatever, whether it's your personal or professional. So, all right, let's go. Can I oh put up the slide again? All right, well, there's one quick question, Malia. I need <laughs> asked um, to, if you want to take a snapshot of the slide real quick, everyone, I'll put that up for a moment. And let me go off. Uh, we'll just do this just a moment. So again, if you want to take your, use your cameras that come in handy, take a snapshot of that slide. Okay, you got that. And then here's the next one. Okay, now we're back, Malia. Sorry, I did. No, that's another, right. I know we're switching. There was another back. question that I, you, you tricked me, Joan. I didn't know we were going on this quickly. I know. Well, I well, I didn't either. But we <laughs> no sense killing time. Let's um, be efficient. <laughs> I saw a couple more questions. And I was trying to grab them real quick. Um, okay, let's start with a, a little one here. Michelle wants to know how do you build influence remotely. Um, that's a great question. I did see it just pop up. So from a remote position, you'll have to, um, you want to stay visible to others and your influence would have to come through in your written communication or your verbal communication. So you're still using the the skills that you would use to influence in person like if i wanted to influence you or persuade you i'm going to take into consideration your motivators i'm going to take into consideration why you know what is it i want to influence why do i want to influence this i don't want to influence you to change a behavior persuade you to change a behavior and and you still get that scripted out um and then it's how you deliver that message. So it may, it might be that you put together a PowerPoint presentation where you can email. Do you need to have a, a meeting, you know, face-to-face -face, virtual or virtual meeting, but also being influential. It's not just about the tool you use. You have to be persistent. You have to believe in what you want to influence. So if I want to influence you about something, I want to urge you, you know, to take action. I have to really believe in it uh, because then I'm going to come across in a more confident fashion. If you come across 
with any hesitancy, it's going to be harder to influence others. And again, be persistent. If they, let's say you want to influence a manager to meet more often with you, you know, um, whether it's in person or virtual, and just don't give up if it doesn't happen right away. To influence, you have to keep going, and maybe you have to reword the message, say it in a different way. Okay. And um, speaking of the managers and whatnot, uh, Sharon said, what do you do when two of the most senior assistants, um, CEO, SHRO, have no desire to and for years have demonstrated an unwillingness to collaborate or be part of the team? And yet the other assistants have to run any ideas by them and they don't participate 95%. Um, or support 95% of anything dis discussed, excuse me. Yeah, I, and I'm, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. And I hate it when I hear that situation because it is difficult. There's not a lot you can do to get them to change their minds. It, it's almost like this is, this is the way they live life. Um, and so while I could tell you, you know, be persistent, keep doing this, keep presenting your ideas, I guess I would look, I would look for what well, you did say, I was going to say, look for workarounds, but if you've got to run it past them, um, think about, is there a way you could spin it where it would be beneficial to them? I mean, whatever it is, is, is there a way that you could see that they would want buy-in because it would do something for them? Um, short of that, I'm, I hate to say it, but some people are never going to change no matter what we do. And you just got to hope that they leave soon. <laughs> so that someone else comes in there. <laughs> I know that's not the answer you wanted to hear, but again, see if there's something that would be a buy into them. Okay. Um, and Colleen wants to know, how do I keep my energy up working from home? It's tiring being in video meetings or generally at the computer all day. Yeah, it's exhausting. I agree. Uh, I fully agree. Um, being that I've been in the office for a year and a half now, even though we're in our office, but it's the fact that I'm sitting in front of a screen all day where typically I, I'm on the road or I'm up in a classroom, I'm moving around. So definitely get up and take breaks you know every hour is good if you could get up and and move your body you know don't just go sit in another room and have a cup of coffee that's not going to help we have to actually physically move our bodies somehow even if you you know jump up and down for a few minutes just something that actually gets your blood flowing um make sure that you are eating right and eating often so that's something you know i've learned because i would go hours without eating because i'm just you know get busy with work and i don't care but i've learned from a nutritionist that every couple hours make sure i have you know uh the right things of course protein bars or maybe you have a protein shake to help um, there are some really good energy drinks that I love to have at around three o'clock, two thirty in the afternoon. I have my spark energy drink that helps and it helps with your focus and attention. Also, what's really great is to stimulate your mind, do something that stimulates your brain. So like if we're sitting in emails all day, right? There's one part of your brain that's being used. So like for me, what I'll do is I'll turn around and I'll switch and I'll go this way and I'll work on paper and pen, or I'll get out um, a chart and use color markers. Even though I know I've got to then come over here and type it and create a document. So your brain also needs to be stimulated. To engage our staff. My teams are tired of games and virtual activities. Uh, that's a good one. For So for engaging yourself, I the first thing that comes to mind, if there's any way you can physically get together, just even if it's once a quarter, that to me would be helpful, whether I don't know if, it, if you're allowed to go to your workplace and you can do that, or can you meet up 
at a coffee shop or, you know, somewhere or even outdoors, not, not even go to a coffee shop. Is there just somewhere where you guys could meet up? It would be great if you go outdoors, you all bring blankets, you sit on the grass, you're, you know, you're out in the fresh air and so forth. Doing something like that would be stimulating. Um, I don't know what you mean by games. I don't know if, if these are games you're doing during the meeting, but there might be a way to engage them by presenting a challenge to them in which they could win a little something. You know, it doesn't cost much money, but challenging activities are a great way to engage. Another way to engage a team is to have them take turns. So um, I used to lead a, a group of executive assistants. I started in uh, Virginia Beach and I wanted to start this little group of high level CEO assistants and getting together regularly, but I wasn't gonna host every meeting. So in other words, each of those assistants was responsible for one of the meetings. They had to come up with a topic, they had to provide you know, the handouts, whatever we were doing. So a great way with a team is to assign them, you know, and, and just say, hey, you know, we want to mix this up a little bit. I think it would be great if, um, and you have a chart, uh, Malia, you've got this month, Brian, you've got that month, Sarah, you've got that month, you know, and thank you. Okay, Nancy is stating, my organization is having difficulty aligning all the admin job roles because of one senior executive who doesn't believe in the value of a good EA. Clearly he's never had one. Can you suggest a way to broach, broach the topic with other senior leaders who may be in a position to reignite the conversation and get the EAs the recognition they deserve? Uh, yes, if you want to, to broach another group of executives, um, make sure you've done your due diligence. I don't know to what extent you've done it, but it's really building your case as to why there should be these uh, levels, why there should be these titles. I would also look outside your organization. What's the national trend? I mean, Office Team is a great, great resource because they have the administrative salary guide, but within that salary uh, guide, they break down all the different positions for the administrative profession and how those are described and you know the, the purpose. So again, it's not just what you think, but it's great when you get other information from credible sources and then build, have all that documentation again together. Here's why, here's the facts that we have, here are the benefits. So what are the benefits, you know, to the organization? What does that do? You know, when you're providing these levels for your assistance and showing the value of to your assistant. Thank you. And then yeah, work around that executive. Find the one or two other executives who will be your champions and help you push that forward. Okay, uh, Maria is uh, not very familiar with the topic emotional intelligence. Can you tell her where to find more information on it? Yes, if you just Google emotional <laughs> intelligence, you will find assets of your life, not only in the workplace, but in your personal life as well. Thank you. Uh, Brooke is asking, how do you deal with executives who constantly change what they say to you? I love my job and being an assistant, but it is growingly hard to roll with the punches, so to speak, when each day I'm receiving a different response than the day before. So I, I sympathize. Um, I, <laughs> I'm smiling about this question because this morning on my ride in, I don't know what made me think about it, but I was thinking about assistants and I was thinking about when I was an assistant. And basically, and physically being in the office, I was at my executive's beck and call. Whatever they needed, whenever they needed it. And, and I guess what was having me think about it is how there are some employees who want everything to be just set in stone. This is the way it is. And I've got this plan and I need to work this plan. 
But if as a, a top performing, top tier assistant and being that great assistant, and I don't necessarily mean your title, I was always at my executive's beck and call. It didn't matter what was happening. It didn't matter what I was doing. If they changed their mind, they wanted this, they wanted that. I had a pivot. I had a change. That's why this is such a hard job, you know, and, and that's where people fall short and not realizing what you do. But from your perspective, for you, I realize that can be frustrating. Um, and I, I have more questions, you know, if I could dialogue with you, I would ask you, is this something that's just occurring the last few months? Was it always like this? Because if it's just occurring the last few months, it could be to all these changes and what's going on and executives themselves don't know from minute to minute what's happening. You could ask, you know, we change, I change my mind too a lot lately, but you know, I don't know that answer. Um, um, so that's another thing like, I would maybe even document that and for a week and then in my conversation and not say, well, you, but you know, it's really interesting. I, I kept track last week and um, I, I was able to track that we had to change our projects and tasks over 50 times in five days. And that makes it really hard for me you know, to be the best assistant I can. You see, it's all in how you position it and how you talk to them to see if you could get buy-in. Or it may be you just have to roll with these punches till the end of the year, see where things fall. Um, so those are, are really your options. You know, you have the conversations, you try to convince them if it's really affecting your productivity or it could be affecting you from a stress perspective or it could be affecting other people in the organization. And then, like I said, short of that, if they're kind of like, well, sorry, this is just the way it is right now, then yeah, you've got to keep mustering yourself up every day and, and just remind yourself, yeah, this is what I've got to do right now. And hopefully it'll settle down. Okay. Stephanie would like to know if you can suggest any tools or mechanisms um, to manage team hybrid schedules. No. <laughs> and I know you don't like that answer, but <laughs> you know what? Um, there so many, um, the assistants out there are doing using so many things and are so great at it, you're probably better off to ask the assistants. But also, you know where I would go right away is to go to the Office Dynamics Facebook group. It's called Administrative Access. There are 2,000 and everybody's using different things. So that's what I would advise. Um, Malia, I know I want to get this announcement up really yes. quick because some people are having to head out. Yes. So if you give me a moment, everyone, I, I want to tell you about this fabulous thing. Um, and then we could take another question or two, but next week's my birthday. Sorry, I'm so excited. I love birthdays. <laughs> Whether it's my birthday or your birthday or Malia's birthday, birthdays are awesome. And so my birthday is on Monday. I'm not going to tell you how old I'm going to be. It's getting way too up there, actually. <laughs> But we are going to have a birthday bash. Uh, it starts on Monday and we have all these exclusive, wonderful offers for you. I, I just feel extra generous this year because I'm so grateful that we're all still here, that we're all together. So please check your inbox and, uh, and I'll go into details in a moment, but if you purchase anything or register for any of our events between Monday and August 31st, your name will be entered for Joan's Jumbo Gift Basket. There it is. <laughs> it's filled with all kinds of goodies. Even my favorite, of course, you know, red lipstick um, is my thing. We've got beautiful star earrings, uh, candles, candy, a plant, my books, all kinds of fun stuff for you. So, um, autographed book, autographed book. Yes. yes. 
if, if you aren't getting our emails, please check your spam folder or check with your IT department because they may be blocking you going on. And um, anyways, love you all. Uh, so happy that you're you're all here and, and we are where we are and we're just going to keep doing better and getting better. All right, we have time for another question really quick. Okay, <laughs> let's see. A quick question would be... What are some ways to connect more with your leaders while working remote? Jen would like to know. Uh, to connect with my leaders working remote, I would try to set up, I would set up regular times to connect, um, even in midst of their crazy schedule, you know, is the best time on Friday mornings, is the best time Monday morning, Monday night, Friday afternoon before they head out for their weekend. So and really getting those on our calendars because that helps us be more accountable. Um, so that is one thing. If you could get in a steady, here's when we're gonna connect. You could set it for a half hour, but if you're done in 10 minutes and tell your executive, if we're done in 10, that's fine. I just wanna block out the half hour for now. So they don't feel like it's a huge commitment. Um, I would stay connected by just sending emails, You know, more of a just real quick, hello, How's it going? What could I do for you today? Um, in fact, I heard a great idea from an assistant a while back every morning, you know, she'll ask her executive, what fires could I help you put out today? And I thought that was a great question. And her second question was, what is your main goal um, of what you need to achieve today? So that's a great way you could check in every morning. Hi, just checking in. What fires could I help put out for you? Just quick, and I think if you do it on a consistent basis, but not overload it, it, it's just making that connection. Even if they don't respond to you, you're putting yourself out there in front of them. Um, so that's another idea. So uh, we have one more myth. Oh, you've got, let's see, need to leave for my mid-year evaluation. Oh, well, um, and so be sure to uh, check out our schedule for September. All right, everyone, take care of yourselves. Bye. Bye.